talk this morning is acute uh, postulateral coronary corny injuries. Um, we'll visit the anatomy, um, have a glance at the history, relevant examinations, and investigations of this injury. Talk about the management option in broad terms, but as I've alluded to at the bottom of this slide, we won't go into any great depth on specific repair techniques, so that really is a, a presentation in itself. Um, we'll talk about the controversies, and I'll, um, I'll sort of draw things together for principles of management. Um, the other thing we want to talk about is the chronic uh, postrolateral corner injuries. So the, the postrolateral corner of the knee is um, injuries there really do relate to the underlying anatomy, uh, a lot more so than perhaps other parts of the body. And when considering the structures that are important for stability in the postrolateral corner, um, you can consider uh, from outside moving in the lateral, collateral, the lateral collateral ligament, um, which will provide, is the primary stabiliser for the knee um, against a verizing force. Uh, popliteus tendon, which acts as an internal rotator and also assists the posterior cruciate ligament from a posterior tibial subluxation. Um, the popliteus uh, tendon is augmented by the arcuate ligament which again um, is a, a stabiliser against external rotation of the tibia and the femur and also posterior subluxation of the femur, uh, tibia and the femur. Um, moving inwards, uh, there's also the posterior uh, cruciate ligament, um, which is important and any medical student will be able to tell you that it, it is the, the main stabiliser for the tibia subluxing posterior and the femur. Um, there's some more nomenclature to consider. Um, C. Bucker, uh, look, when considering the complex anatomy around the knee, has described it into layers. The superficial layer containing uh, all that's at the outside, so iliotibial band, lateral collateral ligament, um, popliteus tendon, the middle layer being the, um, the, uh, the retinac, patellar retinaculum, and the deep layer being the remaining structures. Um, this isn't always uh, very useful. Perhaps a better way to look at it is the, the, the main points which are highlighted by the Prad and, and Engbetson, um, which did a, a, a number of anatomical studies to define the position of the lateral collateral ligament, popliteus and the popliteal fibular ligament, and also to uh, score their biomechanical effectiveness in various positions of flexion, and also um, to quantify their relative contributions towards posterior lateral corner stability. Um, there are pragmatists in the room would say that despite um, making all these um, uh, delineations, these structures are effectively all stuck down together in the posterior lateral corner. As, a, as with anything, it all begins with a good history examination. Um, so a patient's uh, posterior lateral corner injuries are caused by the uh, uh, predominant postrolateral force, and this may occur from a low speed uh, car versus man type injury with a bumper um, providing that varus and postrolateral force. Um, it can also occur in, as a variant of the twisting injuries that we see often from sports people. And approximately 5% of these injuries will have some element of a postrolateral coin injury to it. Um, they may complain that they, they may describe a twisting injury or a hyperextension injury. Um, afterwards, they may describe an inability to weight bear, and um, that's predominantly an instability and extension for the knee. Um, it may have a more subtle presentation with the inability to walk downstairs, and they may describe to you a ripping sensation. Um, upon examination, uh, you may the salient features include a varus thrust during the stance phase of their gait. Um, obviously, uh, lateral collateral ligament laxity with, the, with varus stress testing. And also, post, they may have a, a positive Lachman's or a um, positive posterior draw. Um, specific to the posterior lateral corner, a uh, dial test may show increased external rotation of the affected side compared to the unaffected. Um, external rotation recovatum may show that the knee sags, has a posterior sag when um, lifted from the bed in external rotation. And a reverse pivot shift test um, may show that the knee uh, re-enlocates as it's brought from flexion to extension. 
X-ray may show uh, uh, evidence of small fractures, uh, avulsion fractures of the fibular head or a Sagon fracture. Uh, may also be normal or may also show um, opening of the lateral uh, compartment. MRI is really the most useful investigation for this injury with it being able to de uh, delineate the relevant anatomy and also demonstrate where it's been damaged. Also very helpful for planning for your subsequent repair. In looking at um, stage or grading these injuries, there are two, um, I could find two classification systems that are in uh, reasonable, reasonably well described usage, but to my understanding, these have yet to be validated and aren't universally accepted. Uh, like most classification systems, they begin with the mildest form of injury and finish with the, the most severe form. Uh, Houston looked at um, posterior lateral point injuries, considering them as grades one, two, and three, where grade one is essentially a sprain with little signs of ligamentous laxity, and grade three is a, um, a complete disruption. That really only considers the the um, the injury in the coronal plane, and to further characterise the classification system, one also performs a dial test to um, to delineate any rotational instability that the knee has. Uh, another system described by Fennelli and Larson is A, B, and C, and com tries to combine um, more of the various and rotational features. So an A just being isolated rotational instability, there being no varus laxity. B is the, the beginning of uh, varus laxity, and C is an injury which has significant varus laxity and also rotational instability. When approaching the management of these injuries, um, as always, we can consider it in surgical and non-surgical um, interventions. Uh, for the more mild form of injury, essentially the light sprains of the postlateral corner, um, there are treatment algorithms out there that which include um, non-weight bearing period, the mobilisation of the knee in a brace, and then early mobilisation there out there afterwards. Um, a, retrospect a retrospective cohort studies have shown reasonable functional outcomes at eight years in groups treated this way with a um, a uh, Houston 1 or 2 style injury uh, with minimum radiographic arthritic change present at that time. Although other authors have suggested that there are variants of the Houston type 2 injury which will still have some uh, various laxity uh, long term and may ben have benefited from an operative repair. When considering surgical man management, uh, broadly it falls into two categories, an early anatomic repair of the structures versus a late reconstruction after the uh, soft tissue swelling has, um, has resolved. When considering timing of your operation, it's important to um, acknowledge uh, the evidence in the literature which suggests that you have better outcomes if the repair is performed before three weeks. Um, further, um, any, any cruciate ligament repair performed in isolation without a, a lateral corner repair has also been shown to um, have higher rates of failure if uh, the lateral corner isn't, isn't repaired. As I alluded to in the, uh, the overview slide, I won't spend a lot of time uh, specifically delineating various operations that you can do, but the, the techniques that can be used to repair the structures in the corner include an internal fixation of avulsion fractures, for example, when the fibula head comes off or, um, or similar. Anchors and staples can be used to secure a capsule back down to the tibial plateau, or suture anchors can be used, inserted into bone to, to grasp part of a tendon. Um, combined anatomical repair and um, reconstruction techniques can be used, especially, uh, as I understand it, for mid-substance -sub tears, which have a, um, a poor outcome after it. Um, anatomical repair, and you consider grafting some local structures such as harvesting some iliotibial band, semi tendinous Achilles, or um, use of a Lars ligament instead. When performing a repair for a patient with a postulateral corner injury, essentially one works from inside to out, beginning with the cruciate ligament, uh, then considering any capsular tears, and then as you uh, repair the external structures, it's suggested that you would do popliteus, uh, the popliteal fibular ligament, and then biceps tendon in that order. Although this is an area of controversy, just how uh, how extensive your repair needs to be. 
And with any surgical treatment, there are also complications. Uh, common perineal nerve palsy is described in uh, 10 to 17%. I'll round that up to 15. Uh, patients can always experience a post-operative compartment syndrome in tibial surgery. Um, despite performing your repair, the patient may experience residual laxity. Um, they may go on to develop early osteoarthritis. Any reconstructive efforts may fail. They may also experience persisting pain and there's the persisting risk of uh, heterotopic ossification. Drawing some of this together into some principles, the first thing to mention is to not miss the injury. Um, it's easy to forget that there are other parts of the knee which can experience an injury apart from the anterior uh, cruciate ligament in, in sporting injuries. And so an appropriate history and examination would be directed at detecting that. Uh, as I suggested, repair within three weeks. Um, if an operative repair is to be uh, considered, it has been shown to have better outcomes. Um, avulsion fractures are often best fixed with internal fixation. When performing a repair, don't forget the, the status of the common perineal nerve and a, a tissue, soft tissue release surrounding the nerve may be helpful at the time of surgery. A repair from inside out. And also, um, there is the option of, of staging your procedures. So, um, whilst you could do a cruciate uh, ligament and perhaps capsular repair during the first operation, if you're concerned that the patient may still experience considerable instability, you could reper return at a later date um, to perform other repairs. Um, there's no clear algorithm for the management of these injuries and the, the best management is still being thrashed out in the literature. There are those that ad would advocate of only a partial repair, such as uh, cruciate ligament and also capsule, versus those that would uh, repair the entire suite of structures that have been damaged. Uh, essentially, it's an argument of stability versus constraint with um, some evidence showing that those patients that undergo a full repair then have a uh, loose range of motion at the knee. Uh, the classification, the appropriate classification system is yet to be decided and the valid, uh, validation of uh, which is yet to be performed. And controversy also surrounds the use of staged operations. Um, having one single large procedure subjects the patient only to a single anaesthetic but has attendant risks of arthrofibrosis and post-operative stiffness. Um, these are the references I've used for my presentation this morning. Uh, are there any questions? <coughs>